Okay. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mike Armstrong podcast show and uh, this afternoon we're joined by Jake Shaw who is from the 12ronnies.com website and uh, podcast etc and uh, we're going to have a little chat about uh, business, entrepreneurialism, networking, social media and all of that. Um, now uh, how are you doing today first uh, Jake, you okay? Awesome thanks Mike, really good. Brilliant, brilliant, nice to, to, to find a fellow person who answers that question with awesome. <laughs> Because I'm awesome as well every day, and uh, and and so I, I like that word. I think it's awesome. And uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you do, uh, Jake, and uh, and uh, what the Twelve Ronnies uh, website and podcast is all about, etc. Uh, well, it's you'll love it. It's Twelve Ronnies. It started out life as a uh, a kind of Tinder for inventors. So what we did was is to get inventors and match them up with commercial teams. So, you, you know, if you've got somebody who invented something like a bike, a bicycle, uh, yeah. what they need is uh, an entrepreneur who is into bikes because, uh, you know, quite a lot of people aren't, they don't have a lot of commercial experience. But that then transmogrified into a platform that we put together called Founders and Mentors. And Founders and Mentors, because everyone looks at businesses that are already running, we decided to look at the space sort of pre-launch. And one of the things that we did with founder mentors is we get mentors onto the site who've got a track record of, of uh, commercial success and exiting businesses on the one side. And then you've got your um, you know, inventors and founders on the other side and they can interact so they can get, they can get some steer and some experience from these people. And the first interlocution costs you 20 quid for an hour. And actually what we, one of the things we say often is, to start a business, you don't need investment. What you need is you need to test your product, test your service, test your market, and find out if the idea you've got is actually going to sell. That way, it makes it much easier to launch your business, A, and B, if you do want to get some investment, there's nothing like an order book that makes a business look investable. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so you're basically like, um, yeah, like a training school, a breeding ground for the people who, you know, who need that training. You know, the idiots that turn up on Dragon's Den and don't know anything about anything because well, they haven't, yeah. they haven't actually researched the market, checked it out, sold any product. They've done nothing really. They just, they think they've got an idea and and they're trying to get investment. But you're the the, brown, the, the, the breeding ground, if you like, or training ground that actually gives them some information and some figures and numbers and all of that which actually can get to the point of what their business is really worth in order to get investment into it. Yeah, that's but, it come, but it comes the other way as well, Mike, which is that, you know, one of the things they say on, on Dragon's Den is, uh, well, I'm out. Well, this, this idea is, is that the person you're talking to is going to be in because they're already there. Yeah. You know, it's not, not this kind of, uh, you know, uh, shotgun, scattergun effect of like trying to see lots of different investors who actually want somebody who's going to get what you're trying to do, yeah. you know, uh, and it's, and it has a certain, certain leveling system where people who are completely insane and there aren't many of them, but people who are completely insane have got something really mad. They're not going to get anybody to partner with or to give them advice because the advice is going to be the same. No, that's an insane idea. It's not going to work. But, but equally, it is so important now that people like yourself and all the other people who have got ideas who want to set up business to do it because actually it is going to be the small businesses and the innovators who are going to get us out of the other side of this lockdown and this recession. The big businesses aren't going to do it. You look on the high street, they're oh. all screwed. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah, this, um, you know, big businesses at the moment are the ones that are reeling because of the cost base. You know, so it's only yeah. small businesses don't have the cost base. And actually, you know, it's their only way of earning money. So they have to keep going and keep growing. You know, so those small businesses are going to turn into the medium and, and then the big businesses in the future. Um, yeah. And the big businesses are going to have to, you know, um, sell off, you know, offices and all sorts of stuff and just, just bring themselves down to a, a size that is manageable in the new, in the new world. You know, yeah. so um, so yeah, it's fantastic. I, I'm a um, a philanthropist, business person, but I, I I give education, knowledge, experience rather than cash, whilst mm. I'm building my cash. Uh, so so actually, from from two points of view, is one thing there. I'd love to help you know people in 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 the space that I can help people in to actually yeah. you know um, help them think with things like market research and market analysis and you know getting some customers and all of that sort of stuff. 
which is the bit that I'm expert in and the bit that I love helping people with. Yeah. And it's the bit that most people need help in is the area that they need in order to make that business plan look more better, look more presentable, yeah. look, you know, valuable, etc. So that's something I definitely love to get involved in. Um, also myself, I'm on a mission to become a global speaker and I have all of the uh, platforms and everything in place, if you like, in order to be able to deliver that, you know, our online courses, you know, university, all of that sort of stuff. So I'm constantly creating content. I've done 580 episodes of my podcast since April because yeah. it's all my content. It's all my information. It's all my knowledge. You know, I yeah. haven't even scratched the surface yet with those 580 episodes. Um, I've had 130 chats like this, you know, when I had guests on and that's expanded my knowledge because I'm getting knowledge off them and sharing their knowledge to the audience, etc. I, I constantly, I've read or listened to, I prefer an audio book, to over 14 books during lockdown as well. And I'm learning off the best people on the planet in the areas that I want to be the best person on the planet in. Yeah. So if you like, I, I don't do all of this for nothing. I do it all because I want to help as many people as I can on the planet. And so any avenues, I'm a Business Wales mentor, so I work with businesses in Wales to help them with their digital marketing and all of that. So I'm already used to do, do, you know, doing that you know, process, which volunteering yeah. basically for the government, who've got far more money than I have. Um, <laughs> but I volunteer for them because I, I, to me, it's all about helping entrepreneurs. It's about um, helping the economy, just helping people. I just like helping people, you know? So. But that is, the, but that's, that actually I think is the new way is that you're going to have to, you now have to run. Uh, well, let, well, let me go back. I spent a lot of time working in advertising and marketing, actually, you know, producing TV commercials and that sort of thing and running a few branding agencies. And there's, there's, there's like some really powerful voodoo you can use and it's transparency, truth, and authenticity. Authenticity so the is, one of the big... is now. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah, most authenticity important. is one of the big words of the moment now. But it's interesting, isn't it? Is they picked up on it now. The bigger boys picked up on it, up on it now because because they've run out of other ideas. I mean, I, I was talking to uh, a media buyer at the height of the lockdown. He said, oh, this has been really good for us. We've had, we've had a massive uptick of viewers. And I said, well, how much does that actually translate into real eyeballs? How many people? And he said, oh, we've, had, we've got another million, million viewers nationally. And you're thinking, that's not a lot of people. No. nationally if you're talking about the whole country it's not a lot of people because the old models aren't going to cut it anymore and actually what he needs to do is tell the truth about the situation less and less people are watching our channels they're all on youtube netflix everywhere else the, the point that you're making about helping people is that ne from now on a business that wants to succeed has got to be in collaboration not only with its suppliers but with its customers with its uh, partners with its neighbors and actually, everyone's going to have to work hard. If, you're, if you've got a shop on a high street, get out with a broom. Clean it up. Clean up your neighbor's bit in front of his shop as well. You know, if he's selling bananas, you sell ice cream. You know, just make sure that you're compatible, that you, you're backing each other up. Because that's the way we, we can actually get out of this. And also, if you, you know, remember, there is no such thing as a eureka moment. There might, you might have one idea, but, there, but to get there... You're going to need all the help you can get. You do a podcast. I do a podcast. Both of us are in the business of trying to help people to get their businesses to work and make more money. Why do I do it? I do it because I think it's interesting. I do it because I think it's important. But, but more importantly, it's because the more we help people, there will be more wealth. Yeah. You know, don't expect the government to do it for you. This is, you know, you've got to do it for yourself. And that's why this, this kind of stuff that you're doing is so important. Because, yeah, definitely. you know, th there has never been a better time than now to start a business. Never. Yeah, exactly. You, you brushed on two things there, which are for passions of mine. In fact, I just did a, a podcast episode because you were a bit late. You needed to c come on a little bit later than we agreed. I did a podcast episode because I'm an opportunist. So I, I squeezed something in at the time. And that was about leadership because on the news today is the chaos and the fiasco over travel and travel companies and different parts of the country having different rules and the rules changing every week and all the rest of that. And I said, so I did a, an episode on leadership because leadership is set in course in a direction that we want to go and being yeah. nimble and, and being able to adapt around icebergs and stuff, but not just flick, you know, flicking the steering wheel left and right and all over the place constantly because you haven't got a clue what you're doing. You know, so you're yeah. just changing from one thing to another. So, so I, I took the opportunity to talk about leadership 
I'm going to start an A to Z of leadership series soon anyway. So it's sort of in my head, top, knocking around and stuff. I just finished um, five series of A to Zs of, which was um, uh, marketing, sales, uh, networking, entrepreneurship, and social media. And I'm going to do leadership, yeah. uh, success, and a couple of other things. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that was one thing, which, 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 so leadership. But the other thing you touched upon, which was important to me, was... Um, you know, about um, collaborating, you know, helping e each other, et cetera, because, you know, there's never been a time at the moment where, you know, so much people need help and support and actually yeah. you, you can grow yourself just by working with others and, and working out, okay, you know, on our own, we may not be as big as the big boys, but if we collaborate together, then we can offer something comparable and we can get through through this and, and, and grow in different directions. So, so that's a big thing for me. And I, I, uh, sorry, just just to finish, and, and obviously I'm trying to get people on my podcast at the moment, and then sure. link into their website and advertise on my social media, and just helping them wherever I can. Well, we can so, definitely collaborate on that. Definitely collaborate on that because because uh, yeah. I can I can put it out on our uh, founders and mentors. It's it's 800 members so far, but we we we're not going to make it massive. It's more about quality than than quantity, yeah. and more than happy to. Well, I got a I got a mate in Japan who's from Canada, who's an inventor, so he's definitely one. He, he's in. Yeah. His name is Tim Green, and uh, he was on my podcast recently. Um, he invents uh, and has got a community as well of people which yeah. he helps. He's, he likes to help as well. In yeah, fact, all the people really who um, all the people who like to help are all online at the moment, networking to help <laughs> each other, and we're all finding each other. And and that's why, like, I've done over 130 episodes on my podcast since yeah. the middle of June. Well, I'll give you a little example of exactly that i was uh, um, i'm working with uh, a bank or a banking app called amaze a-m-a-i-z and they asked me to go and make a load of podcasts and films about small businesses right yeah so during lockdown i couldn't go anywhere so i was doing it all around here in somerset and i went i went to see this guy who uh he has this thing called little jack horner's sausage rolls and they're, they're as thick as your wrist, Mike. I mean, they're like, you know, it's like a meal in itself. And they're beautiful, really lovely. Yeah. And you look like the man who'd like a sausage oh, roll. Oh, yeah, I, I like a sausage roll and a pasty. I am a real man. I am you authentic, you know what I mean? I will <laughs> eat a pasty, no problem. Wait, wait, you're a Welsh man who likes rugby. You yeah, exactly. You know, enough said. <laughs> you know, pasty and a pint, any, anywhere, any time, any place. Yeah, no, um, it's what I've always said to people, you know, the, the, the Six Nations is a real problem for me because... If England goes out, I'll support Wales. If Wales goes out, I'll support, uh, I'll support France or Italy. I'm yeah. not talking about Scotland. No. <laughs> but anyway, well, uh, no, I'll yeah, well, just, on that, just on that, because you brought it up, I'm British, I am. So I've got the Welsh flag <laughs> yeah. and I'm very Welsh patriotic, but I prefer to be Britain because we win more as Britain. So I love it oh, when we're the, the yeah, Olympics, no, the British Lions, you know, Andy Murray, Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> I'll, I'll, well, I'll hold on to them all. It's so, anyway, so um, this this guy, Little Jack Horners, um, um, run, by a guy, run by a guy called James Hughes Davis, <clears throat> and he started this business in the back of a pub making sausage rolls, and then he basically had an events business based around the sausage rolls, so like little markets or weddings and stuff like that. Anyway, doing, doing really well. You know, it's a 10-year story, going, going, going. COVID hits. And this is just after he invested in a full facility so he could produce more. So he had to, he had to furlough all of his staff. But what he did was he then thought, well, I mean, I'm on a, a little industrial estate in the middle of nowhere. He decided to make it into a shop so he could go and get groceries there. And he said, it's perfectly safe. They can come in. We've got a whole tur no touch thing. And the best bit was is where you could get a vegetable box where you'd say, James, can I have a box of vegetables? And you go, yeah, there you go, three quid. And it's a box of vegetables, all from local producers and stuff oh, like great, that. Great. So why is, it, why is this important? It's because he put this story out on Facebook on the local village groups, and people started definitely, they're, they're committing to buying uh, produce from him every month. So buying his sausage rolls. And it worked so well that he got, he managed to unfurlough his staff because he needed them in to... Nice, to nice. Love and it. he just goes, Love that's what it's all about. It's about... Yeah. And it's, so what he does is there's a, there's a burger van from Bristol that is called the Bristol Burger Bus or something. Yeah. And it's in an old American school bus. And he lets them use his yard to do burgers once a month. 
So, you, and he advertises it on Facebook and stuff like that. And you're just looking at this and you go, that's actually what this is all about. It's about collaborating. There's, there's his customers who want to help him. He's collaborating with other suppliers and other businesses. And he's, he, he's making money and, and people are enjoying his product. So I think that's, that's a new way from now on. You can't go grifting people. It's got to be a case of, you know, your suppliers have got to be looked after all the way through. There's another guy called Alexander Chocolate, and he, is, he, he sells what he calls slavery-free chocolate. Good. Because yeah. in a lot of these cocoa plantations, they steal kids to, to work in them. Yeah, well, that's, this is this is where uh, you know this big uh, hassle hoo-ha over slavery at the moment, and and all, all the past. This they going on about slavery in the past and all its problems. It's still going on. Is economic yeah. slavery is still uh, it's going on in different parts of the world. It's all it's still basically yeah, get rid of the chains and keep the psychology of you're stuck you're stuck working for me for peanuts because you know you're in an economic system and and you need it. And the slavery yeah. hasn't changed, and so. You know, no. something, that's that's something else I'm passionate about as well is actually yeah. trying to get people out of slavery, doing what they yeah. want to do for a living rather than what they're forced to do because they haven't got no other yeah. way. But I mean, going back to your point about being British, absolutely 100%. I um, there's there's a unique set of people in this country. It's absolutely unique. I mean, for instance, I was talking to somebody this morning about it on a on a different podcast. He said, uh, I said, look. This is the only country in the world where to set the, the, the steps to set up a business go like this. You go, right, I want to run a business, make a sale. That's it. Go sell something, whatever it happens to be. You can go and sell it. The government won't even tax you for your first year, oh. right? It's a good idea to have a bank account, but you don't have to have one. It's oh. a good idea to have one for all the reasons that you and I know. Yeah. It's a good idea to engage an accountant. To, yeah. So you get your books right. Have a contract, right. have emails, you know, have tabs of things. It's not <coughs> you know, good ideas, but, but you can't do it without. Is, you can do it without. You can just start. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing to stop you. We've, if you go, I've got a friend in, in Mallorca who runs the other side of Coento uh, podcasting. And uh, he said, if I register as freelance here, I have to pay the government 400 euros a month. Mm. 400 euros a month. Yes. You actually have to pay them, and there's a lot of paperwork and all the rest to go. So you've got that unique situation. It's restrictive, you've got the next, is this limited? Yeah. Barrier the to next, entry. The, yeah, but the next thing is that uh, we've got one of the most generous enterprise initiative um, investment systems, you yeah. know, with EIS and SCIS. You know, where else in the world, other than I think Canada, can you say to your investor, listen, have a punt? If the worst comes to the worst, you'll still get fifty percent of it back in a tax rebate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Nowhere well, else. You no, know, there's loads of uh, tools, you know, to to help people. On the the other good one as well is, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, uh, there's loads of grants at the moment for innovation and creativity. There's yeah. also if you don't take your money out and you keep putting power into the system in forms of marketing and growth and that sort of thing, the tax man is yeah. is there. Is, is telling you don't pay your money to me. Keep growing your yeah. business. Yeah, so so, yeah. so many people don't they they take their money out and pay it to the tax man because you know they're, they're happy at the level they are whereas they should you know if you keep investing in sales and marketing etc you shouldn't have to yeah. pay any money to the tax man to do massive because you just keep reinvesting so, it don't make any profit so let me ask you a question i mean you're you're i mean you, you you've stated your your uh, uh britishness but talking about wales i mean in wales you've got you've got this uh, uh grenadier car going to be built in wales you've already got aston martin Think of all the businesses attached to those. Oh, yeah. Which are broke. So is Wales going to produce uh, a European Google? I think, um, I think Wales has got the chance. Wales is, because there's a lot of digital space happening in Wales, but it's also happening in Bristol as well. And actually, I yeah. think the whole South Wales, Southwest cluster might end up helping each other because they're both yeah. sort of, competing with each other at the moment if they can start collaborating as, as britain as the as the southwest quarter of britain you know yeah. I, I think because wales has got space let's see and that's what happened with um, silicon valley and space lots of big buildings could appear and lots of big businesses etc yeah and that's what yeah. the thing is london can never have that because you can't have that space so you can't let these like super companies grow in london they can't they can't grow they're gonna grow elsewhere and yeah. i think because Wales is a country, it has that focus. Cardiff always has that focus, you know, like yeah. London does. But Cardiff's got space to grow into, you know, like London hasn't, you know. So and I've the got, southwest have as well. Well, I've got a buddy in. Uh, he's in. 
he was in Newport, but he's gone to Monmouth. Yeah. And he's setting up a closing business there. Yeah. And and it, that was exactly what he was saying to me. He said, he said, you wouldn't believe what you can get in Monmouth. Oh, sorry, yeah. get in, in Newport. I mean, Monmouth, I believe, is a bit more expensive. But um, it's, it's the same here. I mean, we, near me is a town called Froome that got, uh, that is basically, I refer to it as a West London refugee yeah, I've camp. I've been to Froome. I've been to Froome. Yeah. I, I used to have Absolutely. a caravan in Breen. All oh, right, well, there you go, yeah. So I know um, all of the southwest. Yeah, but but Froome, and I, I don't mean that in a rude way that it's a West London refugee camp. It's just a, a whole bunch of Londoners have moved to, to the place and they've, they've added value. You know, they've opened yeah. shops and they've opened businesses and stuff like that. And that's awesome because only more of that is going to happen now. Yeah. You know, because people are saying, do I really need to be in London? I could be elsewhere. Well, this I is, yeah. Anywhere. I was on a, a, a networking event just before this um, with a, a lady called Amanda Prothero Thomas. She's on the property program, Hot Property. Oh, and yeah, she used yeah. to be on a Scorio and a few other um, sports programs and stuff. Scorio was like the Welsh match of the day, you know, for, for, yeah. for Welsh games and stuff. And um, <clears throat> she was just saying, now everyone's exiting London now because London, you can't get anything with space for, for any, you know, it's, it can't, you've got to spend a lot of money to get anything with space. So even like top celebrities and people on the telly now, they live in flats and apartments because there's no space because you know, the, 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 the houses cost a real lot of money or you've got to move to Surrey or somewhere like that you know, for the big but, houses. <laughs> exactly. Well, there's a, a mate of mine, he's got a business in central Manchester. They've got 150 desk space. Yeah. Uh, they're downsizing to 30 and will be either in Wigan or Warrington because there's the motorway interchanges and the railways and stuff like that. And Wales has kind of got that in spades because you get to the M5 and there's, you know, once you get across the bridge, there's all that there. There's like, you know, where Celtic Manor is and all that and, and all the way yeah. down. It's, well, that's it's one of the best places Langston. to buy at the moment in Wales. It's by uh, um, uh, Langston, just outside yeah. by the Celtic Manor on the motorway junction. There's a lot of yeah. space for there. And you yeah. just literally you you're on the M5 and and you know straight up to London or straight up. Yeah. You know I used to cover the whole of the country as a corporate sales director. You yeah. know and I used to um, go from Caerphilly area, yeah, yeah. And I'm from Cardiff and you know I could get up and up and down to anywhere in, you know pretty much other than Scotland and Ireland which I fly to. You know yeah. I used to go up and down to Leeds, Newcastle the same day. You know. Um, yeah. The other side, you know, Essex, all around Kent and all that oh, yeah. side. That's... South Coast, you know, like um, Brighton and Bournemouth I, I, and Southampton, to... Portsmouth. Oh, yeah, exactly. So I used to have a box all Omega, mate, V6. Yeah. Up and down the motorways. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like, you know, I used to love it. I, lo I used to love driving. I do love driving. I love driving all over the place, like, you know, but now it seems a lot easier and you can get a lot more done. I used to have to travel sometimes three, three and a half hours, go do a two hour meeting, come three and a yeah. half hours back or, or do a two hour meeting, go straight to another two hour meeting and then three and a half hours back, you know, depending on if I can oh, get yeah. two in the same area. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, I think it's, I, I think that's important training, doing proper sales. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing proper sales. Yeah, well, I mean, well, 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 that sort of sales wasn't even what I would class as proper sales. That was easy sales. That was that was like yeah. um, you had a meeting, cup of you tea. Had a meeting. They were expected you, you to, you, yeah. to the door. Yeah. I used to do the door to door <laughs> stuff first of all. Consumer double glazing, sixteen to twenty one. That was proper sales. Who did you work for? I Who worked for uh, Stay Bright Cold Seal Anglian. You worked for Cold Seal. I used to yeah. work for Cold Seal. Did you? Yeah. Well, I worked for Cold Seal in Cardiff when they opened up their branch. They had hunted me from Stay Bright. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I used to. Work, I, I know. I'm still friends with uh, with Pat Chambers and uh, uh, unfortunately, Ivor Jacobs, his partner. He's he's become unwell. Do you, know Ian, yeah. do you know Ian Whitburn? Uh, the name rings about. It was a long time ago. Then, he, mate. He, he opened up the Cardiff branch, and he's in media now. He's in media in Swindon somewhere. So oh, right. um, I no, I, 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 so I used to do all the TV commercials and all the radio commercials. Okay, yeah, I remember all, all the Jamaican cricket, uh, the the funny, the funny cold seal ads, like you know. Yeah. Yeah, um, cold steel windows are the best. Double two, double one, double five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there we are. Then, yeah, so I started out there. So everything yeah. I've ever done since that that was easier. But I also did a bit of B to B door to door as well. So I used to go yeah. when I first got a car. So when I didn't have a, a car, I was doing door to door, and they dropped me around in the minibus. And yeah. then when I the, the older Leyland Daft fans stay bright. And then, and then I got my own minibus from Cold Seal because I was a team leader. So I, I bought a Bedfordshire van, a Bedfordshire yeah. minibus. I wasn't even driving, but I bought one. So my driver could take the team out, you know. Yeah. And um, 
and then uh, I went into B2B business then, sort of at 21, so five years into B2C. I did a lot of like um, door-to-door B2B jobs. And then I, I, I took a job uh, doing telesales to get off the, the roads because I was getting loads of points on my license uh, yeah. because like they just started putting these fixed cameras everywhere. That's you know, right. and I'm a rep yeah. driving around, you know, rushing like you do for appointments. Yeah. So I, I took a telesales job and I, I thought I'd be off the road for six months and, and maybe a year or whatever, let my bright license breathe. And I ended up in a company for 10 years, which was a tech startup business. And we yes. grew from like no staff to 250 staff and no turnover to 25 million turnover in a 10 year period. And that yeah. tech startup business is now turning over 125 million. Brilliant. When I left 10 years ago, I had a, uh, I increased the um, retention rate from 83% to 93% in customer numbers, but the actual value we increased from like 80 odd up to 120. So basically the yeah. portfolio was growing by 20% rather than decreasing by 20%, which is the position when I took over the team. So basically yeah. I left it in good shape that it was compounding every year by 120% growth. So, yeah. so, you know, that's the sort of experience I've got that I can help other people in tech yeah. startups and just in startups in general. You know, a lot yeah. of businesses can't see the future, whereas I've been to the future for most businesses. So I, yeah. I know what it looks like. Yeah, but it's, well, listen, it's, it's the key thing, isn't it? Is, have you got a product that will sell? How can you sell it? And not everybody can sell. It's, it's no. a skill in itself, you know, um, the, the ability to talk to people and the ability to understand what people need and, you know, having that emotional intelligence. There's a whole bunch of stuff you need to know. It's not no. just having a gift of the gap. No, no, and a lot of people think that, 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 that all, that's all it is. But actually, I'm an extremely good listener, and that's actually more important than being able to have the gift of the gab. If you like, you know, I don't stop talking, so people find it hard to believe that I can listen. But actually, <laughs> I can listen intently because I'm a results-based salesperson, and I learned a long time ago that if you don't listen to people and give them what they want, you're going to get your commission. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they, they're not going to buy, and they're not going to want it. You know, so you have to listen to, to what they want and not what you want to give them. Well, it's, this is in, interesting, and it, it chimes exactly with this interview with uh, James from uh, Little Jack Horner Sausage Rolls. He says the big problem is, is you don't give people what you think they need, you give them what they want. Yeah. And, it, and it sounds really basic, but there are so many people who get that wrong. Um, yeah. You know, is it something people need or they want? Yeah. Is it, you know, and, and sure, you can create a need. Absolutely. I've worked on the marketing in the... Oh, in yeah, the you, can, you can. You can manipulate you can it. Need, but but it's that, that bit. Will it make their life better? Will it make yeah. it easier? Will it make the, it cheaper? Will the, it make the problem it is, as well, you can manipulate. You can actually uh, emote <laughs> people into buying something, but they won't come back for you again, so you're not building any trust. And it's many short-termism short way of looking at things. And actually, yeah. if you give people what they need or what they want, they'll actually come back again and again and again. So actually, it's a much smarter way of selling. But some yeah. salespeople are too thick to realize how to become <laughs> smart. So they, 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 they're trying to do one over on someone all of the time rather than actually yeah. just planting trees for the future. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah. But, but, but yeah, where, where you were saying that, I help people now with things like their website, their content, their copy, all sorts, any area of sales and marketing. I would say right. I'm an expert in, like you know, and uh, and I also know other experts in. If I need uh, an extra helping hand or extra pair of eyes or whatever, so so I, I got three sixty degrees of sales and marketing covered. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Most people I a niche in one one what you know in one sort of fifteen degree segment or another fifteen degree segment or whatever, like you know, and uh, well, I, just, I just know people, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just know people. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair enough. And, and I, what I, happens I'm is, it's like, it's like if I get asked by somebody, right, when I'm out and about, oh, um, can you have a look at my website, tell me what's wrong with it, right? I don't need to have a look at their website. If it was working, they wouldn't be asking me the question, right? Which means it's got the same 90% of things wrong with it that every other website has got, yeah? That's, it's yeah. got wrong language on it. It's got no keywords on it. This is not being found, yeah? It's talking in terms of their industry language rather than what the customer wants them to talk about, yeah? So it's got yeah. like things like... Um, abbreviations on the you know industry jargon and just industry speak yeah? yeah um it's not interactive so i haven't got any sort of pathway or you know i'm going call to actions on it i'm going no way of engaging with people you know so when people ask me to have a look at their website i said i don't need to <laughs> i'll tell you what's wrong with it now people it's the same as when you go networking instead of saying like, how can i help you people are like oh i do this i do that and they tell you a million things about all the things they do 
Nobody's interested. Yeah. Nobody's interested yeah. in what you do until you actually until you actually um, show interest in other people and actually find out what they're interested in and then match. So, so to me, I'm a solution seller. So I, I ask people what they need and then I match yeah. something that I can do to what they need. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and well, that's I, it. And that's the same as with, with a website. You don't you don't um, show, advertise your website. You find out what people are looking for and be that. Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. easy to be done. You just got to do a bit of key, key keyword research, like that. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll send you an invite for founders and mentors. Yeah, you can just get on there and, and have a mooch around, have a look. Um, and then we'll, we'll just get your podcast and we'll stick them up. Or you, I mean, you can stick them up yourself, but I'll I can stick them up in there. And yeah. I'll, I'll use stick out stuff through LinkedIn all the time. Yeah, um, and also, if you can, if you if you if you have personal relationships with any of these guys, if any of them want to come on and share their story, share their message for yeah, whatever well, that yeah, purpose okay. may be, you know, yeah. whether that be for you know looking for investors or getting getting themselves out there, because I'm global at the moment. Yeah, yeah? I, I okay. I'm global, so I'm reaching out and connecting people all around the world. I've got a map uh, of the globe on my wall, and I stick yeah. a red pin in with, with where I'm connected with somebody or when I've had someone on my podcast. And I don't yeah. get on my, on my podcast just to record an episode and that's it. It's the start of networking. It's the start of relationships. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what I said to people when I started doing podcasts. Is that I've yet to have somebody say no. Yeah. You know, well, it's, say, it's, a great end, it's a great front end to a funnel. It's the yeah. best front end to a funnel. Because all it's I do is I ask people to come on my right, podcast. Yeah. They say, yeah, nobody says no. So it's yeah. the best, you know, if I, if I phoned them up and said, do you want to discuss sales and marketing or do you want to discuss this or, or whatever, you'd have a percentage of people that would say, yeah. But yeah. for the podcast, everyone says, yeah, I can discuss anything I want with them when I want it. Yeah. Well, listen, the, the best one was I had, I did one just before COVID. I managed to get uh, time with uh, the bloke who's like general manager of a major luxury hotel brand, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hilton. Big, it's that that level that level so there are only a, a handful of them there, so. but, but out of out of out of respect for them and also because what i'm about to tell you is that what i was talking to him about was what can retail learn from luxury hotels you know and basically retail is all about detail uh, sorry uh, hotel experience is all about the experience yeah. it's all about being there delivering before the customer even knows they need it and it's a beautiful beautiful thing and because he's a gym and he, he actually grew up in wales and uh started he started his career washing pots in a pub in rural yeah. wales and has no qualifications whatsoever and is now in charge global ma group general manager anyway we did this whole podcast it was absolutely awesome and then covid hit so suddenly if you're in the hotel business your whole story is out of the question. It's not even. It's not even worth asking. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna do another one with him. Uh, literally, there's a whole. There was like about five or six podcasts I'd done that I had to ditch because of COVID, yeah. because the game has completely changed. It's yeah, completely brilliant. changed. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, well, you know, that's but, it. You got. You got. You got to pivot. You got to change. You know, like like uh, I was doing a bit of Airbnb property management before COVID. Airbnb yeah. market just died. <laughs> yeah. 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 <coughs> well, what, do you, what do you think? Tell me, what's the story? Because Pen Arf, that's pretty close to the coast isn't it where yeah, you are it's right on the sea yeah yeah um so, so you see there must be an uptick in in people coming on holiday to coastal wales now yeah well panar's more residential than uh, than right. tourist uh, anyway but yeah i think wales has had a massive surge uh, of the staycationers since um I, I i do a lot of business networking and we had a, a guy on from celtic holiday parks from west wales right. and west yeah. wales obviously uh, you know was decimated because it's mostly tourism you know, yeah. Pembrokeshire and, uh, you know, all that sort of side, side of Wales. So, so obviously it was decimated during the, the lockdown period, et cetera. But I think they have had a decent bounce back since. I think fantastic. Yeah. I think I, I think a lot of people have told me that. I was down in Cornwall, which I refer to as like Wales, but without the sense of humour. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and no, I genuinely mean it. I, mean, I think West Wales is knocks the spots off Cornwall, personally. I mean, it, Cornwall's beautiful, but West Wales is better. I, I, I myself have been to both on holiday and I probably would agree with you that West Wales is yeah. better. There's more to do and a shorter space. And for, for yeah. me personally, like Cornwall and that it has lost the English people in this. So it was just tourists. Whereas Wales, yeah. you get the tourists and the, the population, and, and the, local, the Welsh yeah. people as well. Um, but the, the guys in Cornwall were telling me that every single holiday park was booked out. Every caravan park, every campsite, 
it just waiting for sort of August, booked out, everybody was there. And I think, uh, and it's interesting, I went, I took, the, or not me, my wife organised to go to Exmoor. And we went there a couple of weeks back and we went to Coombe Martin, which is this little, little uh, place on the coast there. And you could see, and this isn't a criticism of the people, you could see the people who would normally be in Spain were there. Yeah, because yeah. they weren't the people you'd expect to see there. So I think what's going to be good out of this is that places like West Wales, Cornwall, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, have just a, a new market has found them. You know, people say, "Look, it's it's two years, two 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 three hours down the motorway." I had to do a, a, a film shoot in Luzerne in Switzerland, and we worked out that it would be cheaper and quicker to drive from London to Switzerland rather than fly. Yeah, I think I think people are beginning to now understand that. I mean, because like, if you think about it, you get on a plane at Bristol to go to Lanzarote or something like that. Don't don't even think about the actual flight time. It's the time it's going to take you to get to the airport. <coughs> process yeah, two hours through. before, two hours after, you know, all that sort of stuff. Not there. Whereas you know you could you could drive it quicker and and it, 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 you know West Wales course. So I think you know there's a lot of positive things to come out of this. People have seen stuff that's under their noses and that they can use. So yeah, I think the only, the only downside is the weather. We didn't have a very good summer weather. If we'd have had the weather, that would have attracted a load more people for the staycation for a long time. And two years ago, we had amazing summer, amazing weather. What we had this year was an amazing lockdown period weather the spring the spring was amazing but yeah. we didn't have a very good summer it's just been raining all the way through in Wales oh, oh, the, oh the irony Mike yes yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but the reason I say that right is during lockdown I went out more I think than I've done in the last eight years so yeah. my lockdown was much more opened up than yeah. Then since I've been self-employed and, and, and basically what happened was once they said you could only go out an hour a day I thought I'm going to go out an hour every day yeah? yeah. So I was yeah. going out an hour a day when I was working from home in my own lockdown for the last eight years before lockdown. Yeah. I, I yeah. was too busy working on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I'd only go out on a Thursday, Friday, yeah. maybe on the weekend. I was out yeah. every single day. And because the weather yeah. was glorious as well, you know, I was just like, oh, I'm going to get out on my bike and just ride around the bay. Well, I'm a, I live in a very rural area. So, um, I, I, I mean, sure, I didn't go into any shops or anything. But yeah, I think it, it was the, the lockdown has it's been a very light touch here. Um, I mean, oh yeah, same, same in Wales. Like you know, yeah. certain rural parts, people locked down. What what lockdown to some some parts of rural Wales because it's just too small and there's not enough population for people to be worried yeah. about it. Like, you know. But but I've saved a ton on train fares going into London, and I've yeah. saved a, you know and saved a bunch of time as well, which in a little bit is maybe ever so slightly lazy. If yeah. you know what I mean, I'm not getting out of bed yeah. at six half past five, six o'clock like I used to. Uh, which I, I think I'm going to force myself back into the habit of doing it, so I can yeah. have those extra four hours in the day. Well, I but, spent yeah. six months. I spent six months in joggers and a t-shirt. You know, as you can see, I'm in a shirt and a jacket now. It's the first. It's only this week. It's the first time I put a shirt and jacket on. Yeah, in like six well, months. I'm just because I'm exercising every day. I just like I'll just just keep it cash. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I tell you, I've got I've got a load of Savile Row suits in the in the cupboard behind me. Which yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm seriously thinking I'm never going to wear again. Because I just I'm just not going to get the opportunity, and you know that bit where you put them on and you go, <laughs> yeah, 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 well, yeah the, the wedding. It's usually because I don't wear suits anymore. I used to, I wore suits all the time, all my yeah. life, pretty much, and um, and and I haven't worn suits for the last eight years because when I was going out and about for meetings and for networking, I was doing the old uh, entrepreneur look, uh, you know, shoes, jeans, shirt, and jacket. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I'm into tech as well. So the sort of tech entrepreneur look, really. That's my that's my look. That's what I yeah, am. Hey, you know? Michael, I'll give you a tip because I got into a right ding dong with during London Tech Week, where I yeah. pointed out to all the kind of tech entrepreneurs with their trainers and their jeans on. I said, whatever you do, don't talk to any of the guys at Samsung or any of the Koreans dressed like that, because yeah. they it's a real no no. Like you know, if you turn up talking to the old man in your jeans, he's like, who is this joker? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, what I always say anyway, you know, the, the, the look and stuff is for the first impression, but it's what yeah. comes out of your mouth and what comes out of your head that, that really grabs the attention. Then and you can, yeah. you can overcome it. You can come overcome all first impressions with just it's really where I've been going wrong, Mike, all my life. <laughs> he looks plausible, <laughs> no. then he opens his mouth. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, with, with me, I'm a detailed person, like, you know what I mean? And I know a lot about a lot of stuff. So as soon as you start talking, you grab people's attention, whether yeah, they've yeah. given you whatever first impression or not, like, you know, so first impressions are massive and they do count, but it's actually depth, depth of you and knowledge and experience that really counts, you know, when, when it comes to making deals. Um, so, serious question. Uh, you, you're clearly a busy person. Yeah. And um, what sort of shape of people would you like funneled in your direction i mean obviously there's the, the whole podcasting thing but what i'm saying is in you know paying gigs what sort of people are you after uh tech startups ambitious tech startups who want to go um you know uk wide or global okay. yeah um you know companies you know i work for a company called credit safe they were a, they were a sales company they're credit reference I know, agency I know credit Safe, yeah, yeah. I run the corporate sales team for eight out of 10 years I was there whilst being one of the two top sellers for the whole 10 years I was there. Yeah. yeah. Plus managing the reseller affiliate channel for about six of the years I was there. So I did three full-time jobs for six years. Yeah. yeah. And I, I smashed my target in all of them. So as a seller, my target was 20 grand a month. I used to smash my own individual target as a yeah. team. I took on a team from three, doing 300 grand, seven people, and I grew into a department of 17 people doing 5.7 million over an eight yeah. year period, yeah? So I smashed my own target. I got all expenses paid trips to Cuba and you know, um, I went to Sweden and did all sorts of trips you know, on the company and I used to travel at a massive expense account. They paid me money to travel all around the UK because I was doing the, 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 the business, like you know? It's and I was training telesales people how to become field sales people so they could do the business too. So, so, and I turned the telesales team of seven people to a department of 12 field sales people, five appointment setters, and a few admin support as well yeah. over an eight year period. Yeah. And, and, and put all of, like I say, got the retention rate of customer members from 83 to 93%, got yeah. um, the revenue value from 80 odd percent to 120%. Yeah. yeah? So yeah. just, you know, just did amazing things in that business, managed the reseller channel. The only reseller um, first company in the marketplace was ICC. So our marketplace was D&B, Experian, Equifax, and us, and new kids on the block. And we started taking customers off Experian, Equifax, D&B, 100 year old, 150 year old businesses, because we were smashing them with pricing, product, everything like that. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and ultimately ICC was, uh, when we first started, our supplier, so we were a reseller. Yeah? yeah, but we got them on a great contract which allowed us to do unlimited access. So we changed the way people were using the information. We revolutionized the industry. And, um, and then we kept developing high-end products because me and my top seller, the two of us, would go out to corporates, listen to what they wanted, come back and build it. So we would be, yeah. we would be a bespoke tech, tech company. Yeah. And so, um, and, and so we, we were we well, basically, I was on product development, business development, you know, we were doing F, um, FA, uh, uh, feature requirement documents, FRDs, project initiation yeah. documents, PIDs, going through all the prints, twos and everything, building what corporate companies told us they wanted in the, in yeah. the area of credit information. Know, there's, there was a guy I, there's a guy I used to work with, I forget what he was, but it, it was, a, it was kind of a plug-in for Oracle or something. Yeah. And, uh, what he used to do is he used to ring me up and he goes, Jake, can you come and make a film for me? I go, yeah, sure, no problem. So we'd, I'd rock up with a camera team and basically we'd go to one of his clients and interview them yeah. about his product. And he go, so Mike, what do you think of the product? Yeah, product, brilliant. Does this, does that, does the other. If there was anything that you'd improve about it, what would it be? And they, oh, I'd improve this, I'd improve that. And if we uh, managed to create a product that could do those things for you, uh, when would you when would you be interested in purchasing it? Oh well, you know we'd probably purchase it immediately. You got it. You go, right, okay, thanks very much. And we used to do that every three months. Yeah, <laughs> with his clients. Nice, so not nice. only would he get a really nice testimonial, yeah. he'd also get the exact brief and spec of what he then yeah. needed to build next. Genius, absolute yeah. genius for doing it. Um, well, we, and um, always so I you, took the whole yeah. I took the whole marketplace off ICC, who were our wholesale suppliers. So we yeah. basically had all the resellers. So, so not only did not only was I one of the two top sellers for twenty years and never missed my target. Yeah, um, I was. Um, uh, I grew the team sales. So I got promoted nine times in six years. Yeah, yeah. and I won loads of awards and everything. You know, competitions, one hundred percent clubs, all that sort of stuff. And um, and and then we implemented a strategy for reselling, and we went out and took the whole marketplace. Yeah. So, so not only was I do was I doing three full time jobs, but I was doing them all really, really well. So, what would be your ideal gig now then? 
well, if I can get into a credit reference agency, I was starting. The problem is, is all my, all my resellers, right? Other than one, which I worked on when I first went self-employed. Other than yeah. one, most of them aren't ambitious enough. They're not big enough. They, they they're happy selling online. They don't want to implement the telesales, field sales, all of that side of things. So 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 the the, the ambition is not really there. But anyone, my real true value. I'm a sales and marketing expert, specialist. I've been right. around 30 years, 32 years. I started when I was 11, selling like yeah. um, Sky, Sky, recorded Sky movies, um, matches, single fags, you know, to the smokers, yeah. matches Amen. to the smokers, yeah. Yeah. sweets <laughs> to the smoke, uh, sweets. Uh, I buy them in hyper value, big bundles, and sell them in smaller bundles. So I was doing the, the wholesale to retail thing, but yeah. But it yeah. wasn't wholesale, it was retail, large quantities, just smaller yeah. quantities retail, yeah? yeah. So I, I did a paper round as well. So that was all 11 to 15. Worked in the salvage yard at 15. Started at, uh, doing door-to-door -door sales at 15 in the summer holidays before college. Carried on doing telesales around college. Yeah, so evenings and weekends. So I was, I was full-time all the hours under the sun. And I work from when I wake up now to when I go to sleep every day. But part yeah. of my work is going out on my bike and making sure I can do mindfulness and chill out and have some great ideas and, and, and also right. cooking for myself and looking after myself. That's... To me, that's part of work. Yeah. Are you married, Mike? No, I'm divorced, so that's probably why I can do every hour under the sun. So <laughs> when I, when I, part of the reason I am divorced is because I used to try and do every hour under the sun, but I couldn't oh, no, get away with all of it. I was, uh, I was on talk radio the other night, Wednesday night. Um, they got me on to talk about uh, families being allowed into pubs. And I, I was supposed to be the one defending the idea of families being allowed into pubs. <laughs> I eventually I said, mate, listen, I've been locked down with my kids for eight week, eight months. I need to go to the pub. You know, yeah. I need to. And they said, well, yeah, with kids running around. I said, listen, can't we just come to an arrangement, stick a cage in the corner of the garden, I'll stick the kids in there, I'll go for a pint. <laughs> but listen, the reason why I ask is because I've still got a hand in uh, TV production. So I've got, I've got the ear of various talent people. And one of the things I was on this tip of business and uh, small business and stuff like that, I was thinking of trying to pitch the alternative to Dragon's Den. I, rather than the kind of Dragon's Den, somebody comes up with an idea, a bunch of people say yes or no, is actually uh, building a business in one week or something. Yeah. So, so doing a kind of magnificent seven, getting, getting the sales and marketing whiz in, get a strategy guy, get this, that, and the other, and actually seeing if seeing if we could do it. Because actually, the thing is, is you could totally call people out, couldn't you? Yeah. You could get like these people who write business books and go, actually, no, this ain't going to work on the floor, is it? No. Because because how is this going to work? But I'm just thinking that might be a bit of an opportunity. I've got to think about it a bit. Um, I'll tell you what I'm interested in doing. So I've got 130 plus videos of yeah. people talking about lockdown and how they pivoted in their business to come out of lockdown and, and right. actually since coming out of lockdown as well. So yeah. I want to, I want to produce a documentary about, um, about the lockdown situation for businesses yeah. and how they pivoted. Okay. Yeah. Well, so weirdly, if you, if you can help me with exactly that, I've anyway. been, uh, I've been producing something very similar for this bank yeah. over the last sort of, sort of four months or whatever it was. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I can help you with that. I can help you get that out. No problem at all. Yeah, great. Um, That's what I'm looking for right now because I got all this great content and I want to do something with it, like you know. Okay, and what have you shot it on? Is it is it just it's all on like this? Google? Zooms to do 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 all chat. So what I want to do is pick out all the highlights of what was discussed and covered on each of the forty five to an hour and a half up to maybe two hours, one or two episodes. I want to take out all the useful information and put it into uh, a documentary about because this is a momentous moment in history the lockdown yeah. it's gonna be like world war Two. it's gonna be documentaries and programs oh, yeah, created yeah, yeah. for years to um, come okay i tell you what i can do is i've got to go and see this bank uh shortly about the next sort of season of things they want to do yeah if you can give me a bit of an idea of the sort of things you've got uh yeah. I, we might be able to get them to to put some money behind it yeah yeah, yeah. Listen, well it's, it's all business people talking about pivoting isn't it so listen, you know I'll tell you now forget about tv no tv's at it it's all over they're even gonna they're delisting itv from the FTSE 100 but well, i'm thinking about i'm thinking about a netflix documentary yeah but that's what i'm saying the well netflix is one thing i mean these these places are all walled gardens but netflix is one thing 
another one that I am really interested in getting involved with is uh, Facebook Watch. And it means if you've got this stuff and you can you can resize it, so to speak. Um, yeah, the, then it's a British guy who's head of content there. At, at okay. Facebook. Yeah, well, basically, I've got, I've got all of the uh, the clips on my laptop, yeah? Okay. All of the Zoom calls, yeah? Yeah. So I've got them all. So I, I just need a, a file or a dongle or something I can put them on, give them to someone, and then they're added to, it to whatever story they want to make out okay. of it, you know? Okay. Well, tell you what, just, just chuck me a couple over so I can have a listen, and yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can come up with. Because, I mean, I've... It's not practically the same thing. In some cases, it is exactly the same because I've been asking the same questions of people, saying, you know, what did you do? And stuff yeah. like that. Because if you've got them, then uh, I can probably, in, in the, at the most basic point, I can probably get us a bit of cash to process them. Yeah. yeah you know, okay. we, make, we make, some, make some spending money because, because that I know that, that, that pretty much everybody's interested in that kind of story yeah. at the moment. Now, in terms of the actual documentary stuff anything that doesn't involve going outside is worth doing if you see what i mean yeah. i've got um if you go onto the cuento website <clears throat> we've got a television page which is all the um program ideas to pitch to broadcasters and the problem is that we've got this one called bonnie boat which is about this this boat in spain and it can't be made because they can't raise insurance for the for the cruise because if they if you get a lockdown and you get a quarantine you can't have talent being stuck for the best part of a month and have you heard what they're doing in new zealand no what if, are they doing if you oh it's just terrible it's just but it's almost an indefinite quarantine if you if you get come into the country oh is that yeah so like let's say you don't like having your blood taken they'll yeah. keep you for oh. 30 days yeah, just crazy. But anyway, um, but yeah, we can definitely work on something like that. That'll be fine. Yeah, let, let, let me know because, like I say, uh, I know at some point someone's going to take all of my content, you know, because you know it might take until it, they're looking back in history, sort of thing, until they want it, you know, until yeah. the, the story is retold, if you like, in different ways. But like yeah. you said, at the moment, there's so many TV programs can't be made that they must be looking for you know content that is you know, on Zoom or, you know, like, like, cause I know that they're bringing a lot of Zoom and stuff into TV programs and stuff, aren't they? And, and these sort of two way. Yeah, that, uh, Mike, that's, that's actually the end of the story. I mean, the, the, if you ever want to know what is actually put in the BBC out to grass, it's this. Yeah. I mean, I was watching, it was at the beginning. I think it was when Boris did his first announcement about the announcing the lockdown and they did, it was ridiculous. So Boris does his announcement to the country then immediately afterward, Fiona Bruce basically said, the Prime Minister has just announced a lockdown and he said this and they cut to the Prime Minister and then he said this and you think, yeah, I've watched all this. Yeah. I've seen it already. I've just seen it. Then on, then on Newsnight, they then had a, you know, two of them in the, in the studio and behind one of them, they had this, this sort of apocalyptic thing with some guy with a mask on and like nuclear bombs going off and, you know, a hazmat sign and you're thinking, what are you jokers up to? And then they interviewed four people all like this, all exactly like this. And I suddenly thought that's it for the media business yeah. because you and I can talk to each other directly. We can create this content. We can keep the content. Why do you need the broadcaster anymore? No, no, exactly. Because if you know yeah. sales and marketing, it's always a niche, isn't it? So people who are interested in the stories of businesses will look for, yeah. content about stories of business plus, plus also you know unfortunately because they, they they stretched it too far with the 24-hour news and the media now basically yeah. the news like for five it's the same news for six days you know what yeah. i mean it's, it, you know they want to know every angle every single it's like that um the, the fiasco with the uh, gcse's and the a-level results and all that it's just all that was on the news for like six days it's like yeah somebody's made a mistake you made a u-turn on it why do i need to keep listening to this every it's not news you know, just because you say the same thing in well, 70 different ways, you don't make it news? Well, as I've often pointed out, I mean, I started out my career in the movie business and TV business, <clears throat> is nothing that you see on the screen is real. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Just don't believe it, especially not the news. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, if you watch a historical documentary, there's a date. That might be true. You know, yeah. might be. Uh, but beyond that, it's all fantasy and it's all made up because... By by very nature of the of the of the business that it is, you can't be one hundred percent truthful. 
because it's oh. the nature of the way you do things. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. As I say, I'll I'll what I'll do is I'll send you an invite for founders and mentors. Very happy to post up any of your content on founders anyway. Yeah. Uh, and and you know what you could could do is talk about do we, we can do one between us talking about you yeah. stick it on but also uh you know you can start to engage with the people the members there because we are we are not in competition to anybody no nobody we're, is we're, no, we're about collaboration <laughs> um, yeah i tell you what we could do is you could uh, get me on your podcast do you film that on on video as well I can do. I tend not to, just for the simple reason that what I do is I I do a very quick one. But yeah, I'm very happy to do that. It's not a problem. Yeah. Because so if you want to do what, that, then what, you can ask me lots of questions, and I can go through them what I what I can do to help the people in the the founders and stuff. And yeah, then... Well, we've got this. We've got this one. We haven't launched it yet on Coento, which is basically we've got we've got a colleague who's got like the political contact book, the ends all contact book. So he knows people yeah. like Henry Kissinger and. George yeah, yeah. W. Bush and stuff like that. So, what we're going to do is a lot of these things are really heavy duty, you know, talking about policy and stuff like that. The first question on the podcast is Mike, what's your favorite Sunday? Yeah, what do you um, like to do on your Sundays off? I, you know, I was thinking that I was thinking then strawberries and cream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, but that's a great answer. Do you see what I mean? You know. <laughs> Describe your perfect Sunday. Strawberries. It's, it's the one. It's the one that you can't. You know, even with those big spoons, you can't you even can't get, get to the, the bottom, bottom in them because it's so big. That's my favourite Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, now my favourite Sunday would be just get out and uh, out and about on my bike in the sun, something like that, something chilled. Yeah, you see what I mean? So if you like your Henry Kissinger, who's yeah. like, or, or Bill Gates, who's who's always ready for somebody to say, "What about this policy yeah. screw up that you did here?" You know, you could totally wrong side them, couldn't you? You go, right, so what's your, what do you like to do? What's your, what's your perfect Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Do you do gardening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, bit, uh, it's a bit of a different uh, tone and pace than they were expecting first straight off the bat, like, you know? Yeah, it's, you like, suddenly... um, it's like turning up at the, at, the, at the crease or whatever, you know, yeah. expecting this, like, you know, speedball to come along, and someone's just, like, underarmed it to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, and, and and I think you actually find an essential truth of people if you ask some questions about themselves, and you know, so like I don't know, you you, you start talking to, you know, take your pick. I don't know, uh, you know, Mike Pence, you know, vice, vice president. It's like Mike. <laughs> So I understand you like trains. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go upstairs with him and he's got his train track and like, you'll put your hats on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, it's quite good. Um, yeah, that's the sort of thing they, 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 do, they do on Loose Women. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's yeah. But the, but the point I'm making is, is that we're, we're living in a different world now, Mike. You know, yeah. that one of the things I quite like about Twitter, I don't use it much, is you can actually get solicited a response from somebody, let's say five years ago, you could never contact no. at all. And there's this uh, guy, Mike McCulloch, he's a professor down at Dark, Dartmouth College? Dark, yeah, anyway. Um, but he, right, Dartmouth, yeah. Um, and he, uh, he, was, he, got, um, he got woked about something. And so I got in touch with him about, about that and said, listen, do you want to do a podcast? And he said, well, I don't want to do anything about that. I want to do, can I do a podcast about IQ? And I said, what the hell's IQ? And he said, it's uh, or sort of QI, it's qualitative, qualitative inertia. So basically it's, it's the, it's a physics theory that gets rid of um, dark matter in space. So basically his, it's quite funny because dark matter is, they, it's to fill in the gaps that the theories they have at the moment don't explain. So he's saying that you could make it to Alpha Centauri in four years if you use the laws of QI. And so, like, I mean, this is this is up here, science, right? Yeah. I left school at fifteen, Mike. I know. So it's, going, it's, yeah, it's a bit, it sounds a bit baffling. It sounds a bit like quantum physics. Yeah, but you see, people like you and me are the right person to ask questions about. They go, what? Does that mean? Yeah, well, it sounds to me like grey areas, you know, it's filling in the blanks, it's the grey areas. Yeah, what does that mean? What do you mean I can get there faster? What does it mean if I use this in my car? And he actually <laughs> said, well, it'd mean you'd fill up the car on the first day you bought it, and then you'd, um, then you could keep it for 50 years, and you'd only have to change the oil on the wheels. And you go, 
why isn't this in the market now? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, but that's what I mean. It's just you've got to, to some extent, you've got to always ask questions from a, a sideways angle. Yeah, you know, you know, the fact that you and I both have a history of working in in double glazing is that's a feature film waiting to happen. I, I interviewed, I did this job years well, like ago. Like the Wolf of, Wolf of Wall Street type film, you mean? Oh, yeah, without question. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'd love to produce something like that because I got some Wolf of Wall Street stories, but let me tell yeah. you. you know? Well, uh, <laughs> did you ever hear the story about Cold Seal versus Safe Style? Did you, did you hear this one? So well, yeah, Cold Safe Seal. Style were the ones from Bristol that come along right towards the end of the Cold Seal days, weren't they? No, no, they, Safe they, Style, they, were... they did come to Bristol, but Safe Style were always up north. Uh, yeah, that's right. They were up north, but they, they're, that's they're how I come like, across yeah. them because they they come into uh, Bristol territory yeah. and then they start to be clash over over territories, like you know, like oh, it used yeah. to be like like so, that in the double glazer days. In fact, I tell you, the double glazer days already had that program, didn't they? They had that program on the telly, white yeah, gold, white, white gold. Yeah, but it was ne it wasn't nearly good enough. No, it didn't have it, it didn't have a lot of the. So, hey, listen, one of the stories from the double glazer days I got to tell you about, right? Right, because they were all like a lot of them were crooks in that business, weren't they? A lot yeah. of them. I wasn't one of those ones, but there was a lot of crooks in there, and uh, they used to employ a lot of, because it was commission only and stuff. Anyone who was willing to knock doors and talk, they could have a job. So a lot of people yeah. would come out of prison and all that sort of thing. And one yeah. of the days in Staybright, so one of the boys went into a jewelry shop in Blackwood, skint, nicked a load of rings. Yeah. yeah sped off in the van and all the leaflets flew out with their name on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that, so cold seal decided to open a showroom in Sheffield, right? Uh, or Leeds yeah. or something like that. I can't remember now. And there was an unspoken agreement that cold seal wouldn't go any further North than Sheffield and, and, and safe style wouldn't come any further South. And so they opened this showroom and they were going to have, yeah, a grand opening, balloons and all that sort of business. On the morning of the opening, Safe Style drove a tank through the front of the building and the tank was painted yellow with Safe Style all down the, the side. So Safe Style is always open. Safe Style Windows is always open, right? So in retaliation, uh, and this is this is this is third party that I've heard from yeah. other people, in retaliation, apparently... <laughs> Cold Seal, uh, or somebody at Cold Seal, super glued all of the doors of every single Safe Style showroom <laughs> in one night or something. And it's but it's brilliant because I was so I was working with a pal and he had an overseas property company. He was doing overseas property in in, uh, in Cyprus, and I turned up with the camera crew and I meet his head salesman. And he comes up to me right. I want you to I want to describe him right. Sort of sixty. Long grey hair, yeah, a bit boofed, yeah. bowling shirt, skinny Farrah slacks, yeah, yeah. and grey shoes, right? Yeah. Got the, got the gold gold bracelet, yeah. bit of chunky gold round here, and he goes, he goes, oh, I'm Tony, I'm Tony Swift, and I tell you, I've had more women than Peter Stringfellow. <laughs> I was just going to say, you reminded me of Peter Stringfellow, as you were yeah. describing well, it. We, well, you know, and, 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 I, and like, you know, the, all of like the RT university educated film crew that I've got with me are all like, <laughs> like I'm got, and I'm just like going, drink, tell me more, go on. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he said, he said, yeah, you see, because I worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> had this many women every day, and I'd and, I'd, and after we finished, so he didn't take any days off. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that, that was his favourite Sunday. <laughs> yeah, but, like, exactly. but then he told me this story. He said, and this is where I saw this film started. He he just went, you, know, you see, what you have to understand, Jake, is back in the seventies, I'd what I'd what would what would have been described as ruggedly handsome, and I could just see it like you see a pair of Beetle Crusher shoes coming up the street. Flares, you know, the whole John, Tra John Travolta, Coco yeah. lid tin medallion, you know, the sideburns and all the rest of it. And this guy was just full of these stories. He was, a, that you don't get sales guys like this anymore. And he was telling me all these stories about the kind of complete rat nests that he went into to sell windows, um, the various nightclubs that he would go to. The, the, the 10 hour he, stint, the 10 hour stint he sat in and wouldn't leave until they signed it. Yeah, yeah, the whole bit, yeah, and and um, and then he, he was even writing the lines at the end of it. He was going on about his dog, 
that his when his wife divorced him took this dog off him and he wouldn't stop talking about it and then he i just said said uh, tony you got a photo of this dog and he gets it out and it's and i was expecting some alsatian or labrador or something it's this tiny little chihuahua thing with a with a bow in its hair yeah and it was him and his wife right his wife had hair about this big bleach blonde with the gold lame top like um like uh, uh, what's her name off eastenders you know when yeah, she was married yeah. to yeah the big <laughs> marble marble coffee table yeah, yeah. onyx table lighter <laughs> and you just go like this you go tick tick yeah, yes tick. Go, go on cliche like all, and, 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 and he actually tricks. said but he actually said and this is what i'm saying this guy was writing the script for me he said he goes he goes, yeah, you see, I love my wife. I think I still do. And you're just like going, <laughs> there it is, the end, boom. And then, but then we were, we, we, I said to him, because I always used to ask the sales guys so we could make the video so it would help them. I said, so I, yeah, take me through the sale. He said, and, he, and he literally said this, Mike, he went, see, well, what you have to understand is, Jake, you've got to make love to your customer. You've got to charm them. You've got to seduce them, which is exactly exactly what swiss tony at the fast show said wasn't yeah. it? You see, selling a car is a lot like you can love yeah. to a beautiful woman unfortunately i had my shades on and i just turned to my cameraman like this and was like going <laughs> <laughs> oh no they are like relics they are like relics of the past like you know yeah, preserved in um preserved in old spice yeah oh god yeah 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 and a, and, uh, a brill cream Oh no, he had the full bit. It was, it was, <laughs> it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. But that's what I mean. Is nobody's done that story? No, nobody's actually. Well, uh, you know, it'd be great to you, do. It. If you can get it, if you can get it uh, uh, agreed, yeah, I got, I got some stories I can stick in there. I got, I got loads of them. I was in the double glazing business, sixteen to twenty-one. I grew up yeah. in that business. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? That's what. You know that's what guys, at twenty-one, guys. at twenty-one, I felt too mature for it. <laughs> well, you know the guys who uh, set up Cream. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the uh, well, they started off in um, in the northwest Sheffield Liverpool, first. Yeah, didn't it? in, in yeah. Liverpool. Well, what I used to know that guy, and he was one of he was a, he was a, uh, uh, he was either was he sales director or marketing director for Cold Seal, and he went yeah. off and did and did Cream and stuff like that. And some of the stories he told me about that, I mean, honestly, make your hair stand up. Well, well, at 22, at 22, so 16 to 21, I was doing the double glaze. And at 22, I started my own nightclub for eight months in Cardiff. So yeah. I did a similar sort of thing. And I did not sold. Probably now I'd have a massive brand because I was all into branding and all of that. But I was a yeah. promoter. I was a club promoter um, for about eight months. And yeah. basically, I used to work one night a week, and the rest of the week, I was going out partying, handing out flyers for my one night a week on a Friday yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got some stories about uh, all sorts. Not not just that. I, I worked in a fast growth sales company of 250 staff for 10 yeah. years. You know what I mean? Yeah. I went on a 100% club, right? All expenses paid trip, 21 of us, right? Two and a half grand a man it cost, right? In yeah. Sandals, which was a honeymoon resort. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 21 crazy like salespeople on tour, right? The funniest holiday just you could ever go on. There's just no way I could trump it ever, right? It was yeah. like in Cuba, right? Sandals in Cuba. It, it took about 10 hours to queue to get into the country, right? We <laughs> sat on the floor in the airport, right? And just what a laugh we had. Just eight hours sat on a cold hard floor just everyone bantering it was just amazing it was just an amazing oh seriously thing. yeah get get a bunch of sales guys oh. off duty it's yeah. because because there's always that element of competition isn't it he's told yeah. a funny story now i've got to tell a funnier one well it's listen like, to this know. one right listen to this right i went out i went out um till like six o'clock in the morning right one, one night yeah we were getting up at I seven o'clock to go on a catamaran yeah. Right? You got a cat about around for the day and swimming with dolphins and all that sort of thing. So I so I goes to bed at six o'clock, I get up at seven o'clock, right? And I'm still steaming, absolutely steaming from the day before, right? So yeah. I get onto a catamaran and uh, I couldn't take my top off all day. We we're supposed to be sunbathing on this catamaran and, and swimming the dolphins and everything, right? Because like I was going to burn, right? I was like hung over, you know, like when you're hung over and you, you're like in that stage, you're like, I'm never drinking again. You know, I was pretty much like that all day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I had this like a uh, Shea Kamara cap on, 
and yeah. all the pictures, everyone else has got their tops on that. And I'm like, there was three of us, there was three of us that stayed up till six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Most of everyone else went to bed early, like three o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> so they all yeah, had like yeah. four hours sleep. We all had one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, there, there was a time we all went skinny dipping in the sea as well. We all went skinny dipping in the sea and it decided it was the Caribbean, uh, Cuba, and it decided to blow up, you know, and uh, everything started to, you know, there's like a mini storm or whatever, you know, oh, we're brilliant. all out in the middle of the sea drifting away. <laughs> so a load of pa pasty Brits in the <laughs> middle of a tropical school naked, brilliant. <laughs> and we all ended up just carrying on, the because because the storm happened, we ended up in the Sandals pool, so we're all naked yeah. in the pool. Fantastic, fantastic. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but it's, some, it's, it's that, isn't it? It's, it's like great stories, and 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 that that you know, some you've done them, and I've done them. You know, when you go on some of those sits, and you and like, there's a there's a guy who wrote a book called The Big Big Blind, which is yeah. about it's about sales window sales guys. Yeah, and yeah. he and he writes these brilliant stories that you would totally recognise. Are going yeah. in. Oh yeah. And sitting there and go, yeah, she's never going to buy. Doesn't matter what, what we say, she's never going to buy. Or no. a mate of mine, Glenn, he's actually a really, really good cinematographer. But on his, on his off days when he wasn't working, he used to sell aerial photographs door to door. Yeah. But Glenn is like the least salesperson you've ever met. Yeah. He's like, he talks like this. And he's like, do you want, do you want that shot over there or over there? He's like, that, that's how he speaks. Yeah. Anyway, so he's doing this door-to-door -door aerial photograph of your house thing. Knocks on the door. <coughs> Guy comes to the door and Glenn goes, could I interest you in an uh, aerial photograph of your house? And this bloke just looks at him. And Glenn like, notices that the silence is getting more and more uncomfortable. And he goes, I take it from your silence, you're not very interested. And the, the guy goes, no, 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 I'll take two. <laughs> Glenn, so Glenn gets back from, from doing this mega sale because the guy like bought some for his neighbours' houses and stuff like He came back, he like did about 400 quid on that sale. He came back and the sales director from the company takes him in and basically interrogates him for two hours Go right, Take me through your technique. <laughs> and Glenn goes, I, I knocked him. on the door. I asked him if he wanted a photograph. I said he nothing. Said I said I was leaving. He said he'd buy 400 quid worth. <laughs> <laughs> this, no, I remember all, these sale, all the sales team going, how does he do it? What's his, what's his secret? <laughs> Well, I, I teach people now, I teach people like in order to sell, stop selling, yeah, and because I'm all about solutions providing and, and so yeah. start asking questions, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and obviously it took me a long time to get off all of my training from the sales days because all of that was about, it was about, you know, manipulating sales, if you like, really, because obviously we're trying to sell people stuff they didn't really want anyway, you know, yeah. occasionally you'd knock a door and somebody go, oh yeah, I want some windows, my, my words are falling out, but most yeah. of the time they didn't want it, you know, and so it was about, you know, how you can sort of like, you know, persuade them to have something they didn't want, and so yeah. I went through a lot of training like that, but in about my mid-twenties, I realised that actually, stop trying to sell people stuff they don't want and just try and find the people, you know, who do want stuff and work out how you can offer them what they want. Yeah, yeah. So listen, how much are you going to be able to use for your podcast out of this? I, I, I'll use the whole thing. I don't, I don't edit it. It's just on, done. Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay, well, what we'll do is I'll send you a link for this because I've got, got to do children yeah. things. It's Friday afternoon. And they're all back at school. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll send you an invite for founders and mentors uh, probably two weeks from now if we get a date in the diary for an hour and we'll do we'll do a 12 Ronnie's podcast get you on that one yeah um, and then take it from there yeah brilliant and um, yeah send me some links anything you want me to include and I'll put it in when I publish on my podcast on YouTube and um, and just uh, leave your website and some other contact information or whatever again to see if people see this and they want to get involved in a, a great podcast or a great um, community of founders and, and um, whatever. Mike, where do I find your YouTube channel? So my YouTube channel is uh, just search Mike Armstrong YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah, and Mike Armstrong podcast. So I, I like, basically, I, I spent a long time building brands for other people and even some yeah. of my own business brands. And since the beginning of this year, I've just been building the Mike Armstrong brand. So right. my business is called MA Consultancy. 
yeah, yeah, got it. But 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 I need but basically uh, everything I do now pretty much is just Mike Armstrong. So my podcast is called Mike Armstrong. You can do it, yeah, yeah, because I believe it. Yeah. whatever it is can be done, yeah. But um, but I generally just I got uh, hundreds of hashtags. If you have a look at hashtag Mike Armstrong, you'll see yeah. that I I own the internet when it comes to yeah, no, I that hashtag. That, yeah. Yeah, Got so it. I'm the number cool. one Mike Armstrong on LinkedIn. I'm the number one Mike Armstrong in Google. Um, yeah. You know, that's, that's, I'm all about uh, taking over the world, global domination. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. Let's, let's see the Welsh flag over, over the Kremlin. That's what we want to see. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But, cool. um, well, be, be, guys, be, be, be my guest, you know, put, put it out there. Absolutely happy with everything that we've uh, talked about. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll get one. Yeah, get I'll tell one you what I'm, I'm looking to do a little bit more now, which you can help me with. I'm looking to get um, uh, recommendations on my LinkedIn of yeah. coming on the podcast and me give you one back as a guest on the podcast. I'm yeah, looking so to build that up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just had a great one off a speaker in America, global international yeah. speaker. Um, so I'm looking to yeah. build those up. And also, um, w- once I connect with you now on, w- which is your prominent social media platform, so I can start sharing your content and stuff, helping you market L- yourself. It's LinkedIn. Now. I almost exclusively yeah, LinkedIn. use LinkedIn. Okay. Um, I'm on everything I am, including TikTok. I've just started TikTok in. Well, so, interesting uh, you should say that. Uh, I'm looking at... Um, oh, there, where have we gone? There you go. Um, uh, this, have you heard about this Instagram video? Because because the US are going to ban TikTok, Instagram yeah. jumped right in with with their video proposition. And that's quite interesting as well because once again, that's um, that's Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I actually I've I've posted quite a lot of videos on Instagram as well. If they're short, they go into your uh, grid, and if yeah. they're long, they go into uh, Instagram TV, IGTV. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. I, I, I've been posting a lot of uh, content there. But I, I, I've been wanting to get into TikTok for a while, but I couldn't yeah. dance. I used to do parkour when I was a kid, but I can't do parkour now. And uh, well, I can dance. I can dance great, but I need to drink like ten points first. So, like, <laughs> so, I, so I, I, you no, know, I do want to have ten to, points before filming the TikTok. So I have, I have daughters who show me the dance, but I've decided you just have to do dad dancing. Yeah. Just do, just do running on the spot dancing, you know. Yeah, old, old, old school MC Hammer. <laughs> yeah, giving it that. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely excellent. No, happy to happy to to swap links and everything. Not a problem. Yeah, at I'll all. start sharing um, your stuff on LinkedIn. Then I share quite a lot of stuff on LinkedIn. So by liking and commenting on other people's posts, you help them to go viral. So have uh, you seen the uh, the the um, different choices you now get on LinkedIn? Yes, so yes, the heart and the clap and, and all that, and the, and the uh, in, inspiration stuff and things like that. That's yeah, but if stuff. you use those, they actually help towards your algorithm. The more people yeah. that put like the light bulb or inspiration or clap, the more yeah. that builds your algorithm. So I'm always yeah. putting those sort of things on because all the people I'm connected with, I want to help them in as many ways as I can. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, definitely, definitely, no problem at all. And I've got some very, very good people. That I that I um, I mean connected to. I'm very happy to make introductions. Yeah, um, me and likewise, me too. So uh, I'm sure, Jake. I'm sure we'll do more business together. Without question. Listen, mate. I know you're going to work all through the weekend, but try and take some time off. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I, I I do have weekends light. I work all weekend, but um, yeah. I just do because I don't have a lot of dual podcasts. I just do my own podcast recording. I always yeah. try and get out on my bike and everything. So I, don't worry about that. I'm good at looking after myself as well, like, you know. Awesome. Well, listen, be, I look forward to it. And, and also, one day we'll get a pint in the flesh. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, brilliant. All right, then. Great to, great to have you on and have a great day. You too, mate. See you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, nothing else left to say other than have a great day. I know I will. And thanks very much for listening. Cheers. Bye-bye.